learners welcome to our environmental science in a secondary course of NIOS. In the previous program we have discussed importance of energy in society. During this program we will discuss various types of non-renewable renewable energy. For this discussion we have with us Dr. Padma Saxena, Assistant Professor Dayal Singh College, University of Delhi. Welcome you in this program madam. Hello learners. As we know that we fully depend on fossil fuels like oil, natural gas and coal for power production to fulfill our daily energy needs. We know that the world fossil fuel resources, which took millions of years to form, will soon be depleted, thus affecting the energy supply. So we cannot rely on fossil fuel as they are not a viable long-term option as an energy resource. Nuclear energy is a non-renewable source of energy which is being used worldwide, but health and environmental hazards due to accidents are becoming matter of concern and puts a question mark on future use of nuclear energy. So this is lesson number 28, non-renewable sources of energy. We will discuss topic and during the program, we will discuss the various types of non-renewable sources so let us begin the topic with the objectives. So the objectives are define non-renewable sources of energy, identify various sources of non-renewable energy, describe the various forms of fossil fuels and their uses. Then we will describe what is CNG which is a cleaner fuel, define nuclear energy and its uses and in the last explain the process of power generations in nuclear plants, nuclear fuel cycle and its consequences on the environment. Non-renewable sources once consumed are lost forever. It comprises of the fossil fuel. There are three major forms of fossil fuels, coal, oil and natural gas and on worldwide basis they provide approximately 90% of energy consumed. So fossil fuels, fossil fuels are formed from the remains of the plants and animals present in the distant past. It represents stored solar energy captured by plants in the past geological time. Fossil fuels are the remains of prehistoric plants, animals and microscopic organisms that lived and remain under the effect of intense heat and pressure underneath the earth's crust over long geological time and got transformed into fossil fuel. The best and common example is the gas cylinder which you see in your kitchen or coal we burn was once the sunlight captured by phototrophs. During the Carboniferous period about 275 to 350 million years ago, conditions in the world were suitable for formation of large deposits of fossil fuel. Now coal. Coal is a solid fossil fuel and a sedimentary rock composed primarily of carbon. There are three basic grades of coal. One is lignite which is the brown coal. Second is bituminous, the soft coal. And the third is anthracite or the hard coal. Coal is formed from plants and vegetation buried in C2 or drifted in from outside to a place which got covered by deposits of sediments. So these are the different forms of the coal and their increasing carbon content. And this is how coal is being formed by the effect of heat, pressure and time. Formation of coal. Coal is the result of plant and material that grew in fresh water swamps approximately 300 million years ago. As this plant material die, it is accumulated as peat, which is also called as peat bog. The plant material accumulated under water in the swamps decay was inhibited due to lack of oxygen. Sediments from the sea were deposited over the peat. The weight of these sediments and the heat of the earth gradually changed the composition of the peat bog and coal is formed. Today, 
Peat is also used as source of fuel in some parts of the world, though its high water content makes it a low grade fuel. Peat is changed into coal after being compressed for centuries by the weight of sediments. It first changes into a low grade coal known as lignite or the brown coal. The percentage of carbon in the lignite is higher than in peat. Continuous pressure and heat from the earth changes lignite into bituminous soft coal. With more of heat and pressure, anthracite coal or the hard coal would be formed which has the highest heat and carbon content. Accordingly, energy content is greatest in anthracite coal and lowest in lignite. The sulfur content of coal is important because on burning, low sulfur coal emits less sulfur dioxide, so more desirable as a fuel for power plants. Now, the coal is used as a source of energy for domestic uses in locomotive engines, various types of furnaces in the industries, thermal power generation, extraction of metal and minerals, production of gas, tar, etc. The type of coal determines its use. In India, coal supplies nearly 63% of commercial energy as electrical energy generated in thermal power stations. India has the fifth largest coal reserves in the world. In industry, coal is used principally to purify iron in steel manufacturing. Now the problems, coal is the most abundant fossil fuel on earth, but there are problems associated with its mining, transportation and use. Coal is mined from both surface mines and underground mines. Surface mining, surface mining disrupts and drastically changes the natural landscape it destroys the natural vegetation and the habitat of many species. Mining operations involves digging, blasting, removal of rocks and soil laying over the coal seam, causing serious problems of air and noise pollution. Surface mining may also cause soil erosion and silt loading that disrupts and pollute the aquatic ecosystems as well as groundwater in places where aquifers are located near or associated with coal seams. Now underground mining, underground mining may cause collapse of land in the mining areas during or after mining operations. In case of some cases acid drains from the mine pollute long stretches of streams. Coal fires in underground mines may happen which give out much smoke and hazardous fumes causing several respiratory diseases to people living nearby. Apart from these problems, burning of coal in thermal power plants for generation of electricity and in the industry is the prime source of air pollution. Petroleum or mineral oil, oil and gas were formed from the remains of plant and animals that once lived in the sea. For over millions of years, these remains remained buried under the mud and rock under great pressure and at high temperatures. Under these conditions, marine biomass gradually changed into oil and gas. So this is the how this oil and gas they make its way to the earth surface. You can see in the diagram. Oil and gas are primarily found along geologically young tectonic belt at plate boundaries where large depositional basins are more likely to occur. Petroleum or crude oil is a thick dark liquid consisting of a mixture of hundreds of combustible hydrocarbons along with small amount of 
sulfur, oxygen and nitrogen impurities. It is also known as conventional oil or light oil. Deposits of crude oil and natural gas are usually trapped together under the sea floor or earth's crust on land. After it is extracted, crude oil is transported to a refinery by pipelines, trucks or ships. In refineries, oil is heated and distilled to separate it into components with different boiling points. The important components are gas, gasoline, aviation fuel, kerosene, diesel, oil, naphtha, grease and wax and asphalt. Some of the products of oil distillation are called petrochemicals which are used as raw material for the manufacture of pesticides, plastics, synthetic fibers, paint and medicines. In India, the demand has risen from 57 million tons in 1991 to 1992 to 107 million tons in the year 2000. Now, a project, the India Hydrocarbon Vision 2025, gives the need for petroleum products for India to be 368 million tons by the year 2025. Natural gas. Natural gas primarily consists of methane, which is often found above reservoirs of crude oil. It's a mixture of 50 to 90 percent by volume of methane, the simplest hydrocarbon. It also contains small amounts of heavier gaseous hydrocarbons such as ethane, propane and butane and small amounts of highly toxic hydrogen sulfide. Natural gas is formed through geological processes similar to the process of crude oil formation except that the organic material gets changed to more volatile hydrocarbons than those found in the oil. Conventional natural gas. These deposits can be tapped or used only through pipelines, but the natural gas that comes out along with oil is often looked as unwanted by products and is burned off. Burning of associated natural gas results in waste of valuable energy resource with emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere from its burning. After processing, the gas is piped or compressed into cylinders for use by consumers. This gas is also used for the production of petrochemicals and fertilizers. Unconventional natural gas. So far, it is very expensive to get natural gas from such unconventional sources, but technology is being developed to extract the gases economically. When a natural gas field is tapped, propane and butane gases present in natural gas are liquefied and removed as liquefied petroleum gas or which is also called as LPG. LPG is stored in pressurized tanks or cylinders for use as cooking gas. At a very low temperature, natural gas can be converted to liquefied natural gas or LNG. It is highly inflammable liquid and is stored in refrigerated tank. The production and consumption demand of natural gas has been rising in India for both industrial and domestic uses. After the gas is processed, it is piped or compressed into cylinders for use. Problems associated with oil and gas. Methane being major component of natural gas happens to be a greenhouse gas and its leakage contributes to global warming. But being a clean fuel has advantage over coal and oil and preferred as a better fuel option or energy resource. Leakage of natural gas from pipelines, storage tanks and distribution tanks can cause explosion. 
extraction of oil and gas may cause sinking of land or subsidence. Oil also contaminates the oceans. About half of the oil that contaminates the ocean comes from natural seepage from offshore deposits. 20% of the oil contaminating the ocean comes from oil well, blowouts, pipeline breaks and tankers. Oil kills aquatic plants and animals. After a major spill, it may take years for the organisms to recover. Combustion of oil and gas also causes air pollution. For all practical purposes, the world supply of fossil fuels is limited to what was formed 300 million years ago. When this supply is exhausted, we will have no more supply. So, we have to explore and use alternative sources of energy. Location of fossil fuel deposits in India. India has large reserves of coal and lignite. is found in West Bengal, Bihar, Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh as well as in Assam and Tamil Nadu. Some of the major oil reserves are located in West Coast, Gujarat, Godavari and Krishna Delta on the East Coast, Assam and Rajasthan. Use of natural gas. Natural gas is a relatively clean fuel which burns readily to produce large amount of heat and so is used as the main fuel for domestic and industrial heating purposes. It is used as a fuel in thermal power plants for generating electricity and a feedstock for manufacture of fertilizers. Second is compressed natural gas is being used as a fuel in transport of vehicles. It is a good alternative to petrol and diesel because it causes less pollution. These days Delhi and some other cities are using CNG as an alternative fuel for automobiles. There is reduction in air pollution level with the use of CNG. Then the third use is natural gas is used as a source of hydrogen gas needed in fertilizer industry. When natural gas is heated strongly, the methane present in it decomposes to form carbon and hydrogen. This hydrogen gas is combined with nitrogen gas to manufacture ammonia. Reaction of ammonia with acids form ammonium salts which is used as fertilizer. Natural gas is used as a source of carbon used in tire industry. When natural gas is strongly heated then methane in it gets decomposed to form carbon and hydrogen. The carbon thus formed is called carbon black and used as filler in the manufacture of tires. Advantages of natural gas. Natural gas is a clear and environmental friendly fuel and used directly for cooking purposes in homes. It can be supplied directly to the homes and factories through a network of underground pipelines thus eliminate the need for additional storage and transport. Natural gas burns with smokeless flame and does not produce any poisonous gas or pollute the environment. And another source are the nuclear energy sources. Nuclear energy is the energy of the atomic nucleus. Nuclear energy is generated by radioactive minerals through high technological methods. Radioactive minerals. Radioactive minerals are alternative to fossil fuel used for generating energy. Availability of ore of radioactive material is finite and limited. However, a very small quantity of radioactive minerals can generate large amount of energy. Now, Antoine Henry Becquerel discovered radioactivity in the year 1896 and the unit of radioactivity is Becquerel and 1 Becquerel is equal to 1 radioactive decay 
which is a very small amount. There are two methods through which radioactive uh, minerals release energy. One is nuclear fission and the other is nuclear fusion. In nuclear fission, the process, the nucleus of heavy atom, namely uranium, which is also called as U-235 or plutonium P-239, breaks apart into smaller fragments, releasing an enormous amount of energy. Then the second one is the nuclear fusion. In this process, small nucleus like those of isotopes of hydrogen, namely deuterium and tritium, etc., they fuse together to form heavier nuclei, releasing vast amounts of energy. Nuclear fission. Nuclear fission occurs because the atom of radioactive mineral contain nuclei that are unstable and break or split apart, releasing energy. Whenever a neutron strikes a nucleus of U-235, energy is released, krypton and barium are produced and several neutrons are released. The neutrons formed strike other atoms of U-235 to produce a chain reaction. When this nuclear disintegration takes place, particles from the nucleus including neutrons fly out. The neutrons may cause other atomic nuclei to split, releasing more neutrons and more energy. This chain reaction continues to release energy until the fuel is spent or the neutrons are prevented from striking other nuclei. So, this is the figure showing the nuclear fission or the chain reaction. In the nuclear reactor, the rate of nuclear chain reaction is controlled and the heat generated is used to produce high pressure steam which spins turbines that generate electricity. Two other nuclear technologies for generating electricity from nuclear fuel in a safe economic way have been proposed, but so far they have not proved operationally successful. And these are nuclear breeder reactor and fusion reactor. Nuclear breeder reactor, a nuclear reactor that can utilize between 40 percent and 70 percent of its nuclear fuel is called as a breeder reactor. The nuclear reactors operating today are uranium very inefficiently. About 1 percent uranium is actually used to produce steam for generating electricity. Breeder reactors convert more abundant uranium 238 to plutonium 239 or thorium 232 to uranium 233 fissionable isotopes that can sustain a nuclear chain reaction. Then nuclear fusion reactor. In fusion, two small atoms unite to form a large atom with the release of an enormous amount of energy. The energy produced by stars and the sun is the result of nuclear fusion. Research is going on for generation of energy by this method. A lot of research is being focused on fusion reaction of deuterium and tritium, which are the two isotopes of hydrogen which fuse at about 100 million degree. The advantage of using nuclear material for energy generation instead of coal and oil are that it produces very little pollution. It requires less strip mining as nuclear fuel have heavy concentrated form of energy. The cost of transportation of nuclear fuel is much lower than that for coal and oil required for generation of an equivalent amount of energy. Now, but besides this, there are certain problems related to nuclear energy, which are radioactive elements, if not disposed properly, cause radioactive pollution. However, the major problems associated with the generation of nuclear power are disposal of nuclear wastes, contamination of environment with long-lasting 
radioactive materials, thermal pollution, health effects from exposure to low levels of radiation, then limited supply of uranium ore, human or technical error that could result in a major accident and vulnerability to sabotage developing nu nuclear weapons by processing nuclear wastes. Problems of dismantling of a nuclear plant after they have operated for 30 to 40 years. So some of the incidents we, you must have heard about the Chernobyl disaster in USSR in the year 1986 and the Three Mile Island plant in 1979 in the US accident. They have raised serious problem concern about the safety of nuclear power plants. Location of radioactive mineral ores in India. In India, monazite, which is the main source of thorium, is found in commercial quantities on the Travancore coast between Kanyakumari and Quilon, while uranite or pitch blend material of uranium is found in Gaya in Bihar, Ajmer in district Rajasthan and Nellore in Andhra Pradesh. So this is all about non-renewable energy resources. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Padma Saxena for sharing information related to non-renewable sources of energy. Dear learners, before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learned. The exhaustible non-renewable resources of the earth include fuel mineral resources such as coal, oil and natural gas also called as fossil fuels. These non-renewable resources are formed over time from the remains of organisms. Coal is a solid fossil fuel formed under the ground. The basic grades of coal are lignite, bituminous and anthracite. Natural gas is another important fossil fuel. It burns very easily and produces a lot of heat. Natural gas is found under the earth. Main constituent of natural gas is methane, which constitute up to 95% and remaining as ethane and propane. It can be used directly in home for cooking purposes. Nuclear power is a fuel, mineral, exhaustible resources. However, only a small quantity can generate large amount of electricity. It has many advantages over coal and oil power which is causing less poll air pollution, less mining, so less disturbance of land. But the major problems with nuclear power are disposal of radioactive waste, contamination of the environment, thermal pollution, health impact from radiation. Dear learners, this is all about non-renewable resources of energy. We will come again to meet you a new program of environmental science. Thank you.